Hello, and welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church of Trenton, Missouri. Our church is located at 113 East 9th Street, which is on the corner of 9th and Washington in Trenton, Missouri. You can call our office between the hours of 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday at 660-359-6762, or visit our website at wesleyunitedmethodist.us. Now we invite you to open your heart, mind, and body to the Word of God with Rev. Barry Bulware. Our scripture reading for this morning is absolutely profound. It's found in the book of Deuteronomy. Moses is about ready to say goodbye to the people as they enter the promised land. And he says to them, Now what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It is not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so that we might follow it. Nor is it beneath the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so that we might obey it. No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so that you can obey it. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering. But if your heart turns away, and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice and hold fast to him for the Lord is your life. And he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. May God bless this reading of his holy written word. Please be seated. Four years ago, George Weigel's new book came out entitled The Cube and the Cathedral. He begins by telling when he was in France on a very hot day back in 1997. And he said one of the things that he was eager to see was the great cube, which stands just across the Seine River from the champ Elay and the Arc de Triomphe. He had heard so much about this new structure, how absolutely huge it was, and what a great statement it gives of the modern age. Shaped in the form of a massive cube, it stretches almost 40 stories high, which means it's somewhere between 400 and 500 feet high. And it is 348 feet wide, which is greater than even the length of a football field. And it's made up of glass and nearly two and a half acres of Carrara marble. But the one thing that caught his attention the most was the way all of the promotional materials talked about the size of this cube without fail. All of the promotional materials pointed out that this ultra-modern and highly secularized piece of architecture was so massive that you could actually fit Notre Dame Cathedral inside of it with all of its towers and spires, with room to spare. 
Weigel thought about that and he realized that it was a powerful parable of what has happened in France and throughout most of Europe in the last few decades. The culture and the civilization that had been built over the centuries by the Christian faith was now being dwarfed and diminished by a new kind of religion. And what is the name of that new religion? Simply put, it is the religion of secularism that is sweeping across the world and bringing to an end the influences of the Christian faith. And so Weigel has an interesting subtitle for his book. Underneath the title, he writes, Europe, America, and Politics Without God. And that pretty much sums up the road upon which we've been traveling, doesn't it? Instead of deriving our inspiration from our faith in God, we now derive it more and more from our faith in human achievement. And instead of building our nation and our civilization on the holy scriptures, we now try to build it on the fleeting wisdom and insights of today's secular age. And no wonder the cube completely dwarfs the great cathedrals over in France, because that's what's been happening all over the world. Moses has a stern warning to give to the people some 3,500 years ago. He wanted them to know that this wonderful promised land that they were inhabiting was a gift given to them by the Lord and not just something that they had made or achieved on their own. And then Moses said into effect, if we ever separate ourselves from the Lord, if we ever disconnect ourselves from him and put our roots down in another place, then surely we will lose this land and we ourselves will be destroyed. Moses didn't just say that once to the people. He had said it again and again in earlier years. Why? Because Moses knew all too well how easy it is to lose faith. How easy it is to no longer depend upon God at all, except maybe in a polite and ceremonial way. Now I submit, that's a description of the kind of America we are moving towards. The cube now dwarfs the cathedral in more ways than one. And old Moses from long ago says, if your heart turns away and if you are drawn away to serve and worship other gods, then I warn you that you will certainly be destroyed. Those are his words. And it might be well for us to wonder if that's not a word from the Lord for us this morning. We are in a new sermon series, which is focused upon the founding fathers of our nations. Last week, we quoted from modern day historians when they all say the same thing. This is a quote that historians quote themselves. If you want to control the present, then rewrite the past so that you can control the future as well. And I just believe there's all kinds of truth in that statement. And then we pointed that back in the 1920s and 30s and 40s and 50s, historians here in America began to write history from a secular point of view and historical perspective that deletes faith and beliefs in God altogether. Because if that can be successfully done, then politics and policy which direct this nation can likewise be rewritten. Please hear me say that the one thing worse than having a bunch of politicians who would be secular and void of Christian teachings would be to have a bunch of politicians who are misinformed and extremist in their Christian beliefs. 